Hi, my name is Russ Bianchi. I run a company called Adept Solutions in California. We do three basic things. We either create products from scratch, we convert existing brands, or we stabilize and extend shelf life. And the last 10 years of, of several decades, I've tried to do that all naturally. Things that I formulate um, is a wide range. We do work in flavor science, we do work in cosmetics, we do, do work in beverage and food, dietary supplements, pharmaceuticals, and drugs. Um, if we have any claim to fame at all, it would be in energy bars. Um, a significant number of the leading brands of energy bars in North America we had something to do with. Either we created, we helped convert, or otherwise make what they are today. Uh, there's been a fundamental shift in the American food chain uh, from things that used to be very unprocessed to things that are very processed now. Cereal is not for breakfast anymore. Uh, energy bars are, for the most part, on your way out the door with a cell phone and maybe through a drive through for a cappuccino. So uh, billions of dollars in market share have been lost in breakfast cereal going to functional bars in general. I've got five rules in my business and they're pretty simple and straightforward. If you eat it or you drink it, it's got to taste good or it's got to taste great. Uh, violate that, you don't have a product. Secondly, it's got to meet an economic model. Uh, it can't cost a million dollars a unit or you're not going to have very many buyers. Third thing, it's going to be mass producible on a replicable basis. You can't reinvent the wheel to produce something. Um, fourthly, it has to meet regulatory compliance for what it is and what area of law that it's going to be sold under. And finally, if it's functional or has functionality or provides functionality, it has to do what it says. Violate any of those things and you don't have a brand that lasts. I was trained in Europe and by professionals that taught me you didn't build a brand unless it lasts at least 25 years. So I build brands with generations in mind, not uh, six weeks and out and off the shelf. I'd like to talk a little bit about the food chain in the United States and why life caps is so important for nutrient health for everyone, uh, old, young, in between. In 1965 or so, the average American consumed about 1,500 calories a day. You ate from four basic food groups. Food wasn't particularly heavily processed. You got the milk at your front door. Somebody would deliver some fresh bread. You grew your own vegetables in the backyard or bought them at a local fruit stand. Uh, meat wasn't processed and full of hormones. It was a different world back then. The average American today eats 3,200 calories a day. How come? There's no nutrients left in the food. So you just keep grazing, not releasing the proper hormones from your brain to say you should be done, you, shouldn't st you should stop eating, you're satisfied. And as a result, we have uh, the girth of the nation growing at pandemic rates. So what can life caps do for you and your family? It can help bring back this nutrition that's gone from the food and beverage chain. One of the interesting things that's gone on in the dumbing down of the food chain is a change of ingredients. With pr more and more processed food and beverage, economics started playing a role in the early 70s. One of the expensive items, or more expensive items in the food chain, particularly for confectioners and soda folks and uh, ice cream folks and others, is sugar. Sugar is a subsidized product in the United States under the American Farm Bill. As a result, it was higher in cost in the United States for sugar by about five times than it was anywhere else in the world. As a result, we have lots of inexpensive corn in America, and we converted corn from starch into sweetener. But that sweetener is not fruit sugar. They call it fructose, but it's not from fruit. It's from corn, and it's a chemical and your body can't recognize it and it converts it automatically into stored body fat or jacks up your triglycerides in your bloodstream leading to arterial sclerosis and other bad diseases. No one consumed high fructose corn syrup in the United States in the early 70s. We knew back even then that about 30 pounds per year was enough to harm your body. Today the average American is almost consuming 100 
pounds per year of high fructose corn syrup. Why? Follow the money. After air, water, and salt, the next least costly bulking ingredient in the food chain is high fructose corn syrup. In an average supermarket of about 64,000 items, about 40,000 of them have high fructose corn syrup in them. Things you wouldn't even dream of it being in. Savory products, salty products. You're saying, why are they putting a sweetener in pickles? Well, it's there. Read the labels. High fructose corn syrup's there everywhere. It's the number one public enemy in terms of disease, particularly obesity, in the United States today. One little book I would recommend for everyone to read in very straightforward language is a book called Fatland, F-A-T-L-A-N-D, by Greg Kritzer. The subtitle is How America Became the Most Obese Nation. It explains the food politics and how fast food, junk food, prepared food are harming you and your family and why you need life caps in your diet daily. It's unusual that I get calls from the outside, but I did take a call from someone I had met at a meeting just over a year ago, and he was a really good guy, Daryl Stevenette. And he gets on the phone and he says, Russ, I want to create a product that you can live off of. And that kind of caught my imagination and ear a little bit. And I said, well, what do you mean? And he says, I want something that's portable that truly works like you say it should, Russ, that you can live off of and have, that you can carry around in your pocket. And I said, like a, a, a ketchup pack or something? Uh, like a goo or one of those kind of things? And he said, no. And I said, well, then a bar. And he said, no. And I said, something to drink? And he said, no. And finally, Daryl said, a pill. And I said, oh, this is going to be hard. And that was my immediate reaction, at least. And so I started thinking about it over days and days and days. And I had told him, I can't give you an answer now. Call me back in a week or so. So I started charting out some things like I do all the time in terms of computational chemistry. And I said, boy, this really potentially is a hole in the marketplace. Nobody's done this. Uh, if you could deliver daily nutrients that are truly absorbable in a convenient form, you really have something here. And there simply isn't anything in the marketplace. You know, a lot of the multivitamins in the marketplace aren't even absorbed in the body. And uh, so that really got me thinking. Daryl called back about a week later, and I said, yeah, I'm going to try to give it a go. It was not easy. This was very difficult work, and it took a, quite a bit of time. Um, but in the Edisonian fashion of 99% perspiration, 1% inspiration, uh, we finally got there.